Hello guys, welcome back to Ingenious Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that replace the force system by an equivalent resultant force and coupled moment at point O. Take F3 equals to this. So we are given F3 as a Cartesian vector. So we have to replace these three forces by its equivalent uh, resultant force and couple. So first of all, we have to find the resultant. So the resultant will be equal to the resultant vector will be equal to F1 vector plus F2 vector plus F3 vector. So F3 is given as a Cartesian vector. We need to represent F1 and F2 as a Cartesian vector. So we can say that F1 is f1 vector is acting in the negative z direction this is acting in the negative z so it is acting in the negative k direction so this is parallel to the z axis so it's x it's i and j components are zero so we will write that zero i plus zero j minus 300k so this is acting in the negative k so we need to write minus k similarly this f2 is acting parallel to the positive y axis so it is only acting in the positive j so it's uh, i and k components are zero so we can write that f2 vector this is equal to zero i plus 200 j plus zero k so now we have we have represented f1 and f2 as a cartesian vector so now we can add uh, f1 f2 and this f3 so the resultant is equal to f1 so f1 is 0i plus 0j minus 300k then we have f2 which is 0i plus 200j plus 0k and then we have f3 which is minus 200i plus 500j minus 300k and we have to add up all of these so let me put plus sign here and let me put plus sign here so this will give us the resultant so this is 0 plus 0 minus 200 so this is minus 200 i this is uh, 500 plus 200 so this is 700 j plus 700 j and this is minus 300 and minus 300 so this is minus 600 k so this is the resultant of f1 f2 and f3 so the combined effect of f1 and f2 and f3 is this this is minus 200 plus 700 j minus 600 k similarly we have to find the moment uh, we we need to replace these uh, three forces by the equivalent moment about point O. So we have to find the moment about point O and we have to sum up the moment. So we can write that the resultant moment, we can say that the resultant moment about point O, this will be equal to the moment due to F1 plus the moment due to F2 plus the moment due to F3. So now for F1 and F2, the moment uh, is very easy to be calculated, but F3 is F3 has three components, right? This is minus 200 plus 500 minus 300. So if we look into this F1, this F1 is going to produce the moment about the x-axis only. Since this F1 is parallel to the z-axis, so it's not going to produce the moment about the z-axis. And this F1 is intersecting with the y-axis, so it's not going to produce the moment about the y-axis. So it's only producing the moment about the x-axis. So let me write that M1 is equal to, and if we look into this F1 from this direction, so it's going to produce the moment about the x-axis in this direction. It's going to produce the moment about the x-axis in this direction. And if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction, so our thumb will point out in the negative x. So this means that this F1 is producing the clockwise moment about the x-axis. So we will write, or clockwise we will write minus and this moment will be 300 multiplied by this 2 meters so 2 meters is the perpendicular distance of this 300 from that x-axis so we can say that this is minus 300 into 2 so this is minus 
600 and is i have told you people that it is going to produce the clockwise moment so it is and about the x-axis so we will have minus 600 i since it's only producing the moment about the x-axis so we can say that m1 now we can write that m1 is minus 600 i plus 0 j plus 0 k similarly this f2 is parallel to the y-axis again it's not a it's not going to produce the moment about the y-axis and if we extend the line of action of this f2 it's going to intersect with the x-axis so again it's not going to produce the moment about the x-axis as well so this f2 is only producing the moment about the z-axis and it's going to produce the moment about the z-axis in this direction it's going to produce the moment like this and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the positive z so this means that this two f2 is producing the counterclockwise moment that is the positive moment about the z-axis so let me write that m2 is equal to plus 200 times the moment arm so the moment arm of this f2 from the z-axis is, is this distance this is 1.5 the perpendicular distance of this f2 from the z-axis is, is this 1.5 so we will multiply this with 1.5 and it is producing the moment about the z-axis so that is about the k about the along the k unit vector so this is 200 into 1.5 this gives me 300 so m3 is plus 300k and its i component is 0 and its j component is 0 this is m2 and similarly we can find m3 so for m3 since f3 has three components we we need to use the cross product method for f3 so for f3 we can define a moment arm so that will be our moment arm this position vector from o to this point this particular point so this is let's say the position vector r3 let's say we can we can use this cross product method for f1 and f2 but that will make our calculation a bit longer so to avoid that i am going to use the scalar method which is quite easy to understand and quite easy to be applied so now for m3 for m3 we will write r3 cross f3 so now we have to find r3 the components of r3 so for to find the components of r3 we have to move along the x y and z from this particular point to reach this particular point the end point of r3 so for r3 we need to move two meters in the positive j direction in the positive y then we need to move 1.5 in the positive x and there is no need to move along the along the z axis since this particular point is in the x z plane so let me write that this is i j and k so r3 will have one component this two meters in the positive j so i will write plus two let me write this r3 is plus two j and then we will travel 1.5 in the positive x so plus 1.5 i this is 1.5 i plus 0 k so these are the components of r3 we need to write it here this is plus 1.5 and this is 0 and f3 is minus 200 plus 500 and minus 300 so we need to find out this cross product in order to find the moment of f3 about that point o so this will be so we need to hide this row and this column so this is 2 into minus 300 so this is minus 600 this is minus 600 minus 0 so this is minus 600 into i and then for j we need to hide this row and this column so this is 1.5 into this minus 0 and with j we always need to write minus so minus and this minus 0 so 1.5 into minus 300 and then for k we need to hide this row and this column and then this minus this so plus 1.5 into 
500 minus 2 into minus 200 into k so this is minus and this is into j remember so minus 600 i and minus into 1.5 multiply by minus 300 this gives me plus 450 j and then we have 1.5 into 500 minus 2 into minus 200 so this gives us plus 1150 k so this is the moment produced by that f3 about that point oh so now we can add up m1 m2 and m3 we will get that this resultant so the resultant moment about point o is equal to m1 m1 is minus 600 i plus 0 j plus 0 k this is our m1 then this is our m2 so plus m2 is 0 i plus 0 j plus 300 k and then we have m3 m3 is minus 600 i plus 450 j plus 1150k so now let's add all these so minus 600 plus minus 600 this is minus 1200 then we have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 450 so this is plus 450 and then this 300 plus 1150 so 300 plus 11 so this is 1450 so 1450 plus so this is the resultant couple moment about that point o so we we need to replace uh, these three forces by this resultant at point o and then we and this couple moment so these two will replace these three forces at point O. These three forces will have the same effect at point O. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do help me, uh, do help my channel by clicking that subscribe button. And let me know in the comments if this helps in your learning.